Hello, everyone. Welcome for joining. Thank, thank you for joining us for tonight's uh, Urban Archive Map Demo. Uh, for anyone who is unaware, HDC uh, partnered with Urban Archive, a app web-based mapping system. Uh, we created a cultural sites map as well as using their general map. So tonight, Sam from Urban Archive will be showing you both of them, showing you how to navigate both maps um, using the cultural sites map while also learning how to use and also navigate the general Urban Archive so that you too can be a part of it, add photos if you'd like, incorporate things into the, the story maps. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them, uh, put them in the Q&A or in the chat for the Q&A, uh, and we will, if we can, address them during the probably after. And with that, I will hand it over to Sam. Great. Well, hi, everyone. Um, as Michelle noted, uh, I'm Sam from Urban Archive. Um, we're a tech nonprofit um, based out of New York City. I actually have a couple slides to present today. Um, and Michelle, while you're on, I actually see that says host is disabled uh, from sharing their screen. If you just actually want to go ahead and change that setting. Um, so that I could share some slides from my end with everybody. Let me know. Um, I thought making you a panelist would have solved that. You're uh, next. I should be perfect. I'll set. Cool. Yeah, great. Great. Okay. And we're live. Oh, Okay, I think everyone is looking at my screen, but again, uh, I'm Sam from Urban Archive. We're a tech nonprofit based out of New York City. Um, we do have some uh, partners outside of uh, the five boroughs, but I'll get a little bit more into that. Um, I'm sure a lot of you here are familiar with who Urban Archive is, but in case you aren't, this is your first time learning about us. Uh, we are a tech nonprofit that uh, is working with different museums, libraries, archives, preservation groups across the city, um, developing just collaborative tools for them to share local history with the public. Our goal and all this right here, we're kind of saying is, is to extend the reach of cultural institutions, but I think it's really twofold at the same time. I'm hoping to create, create tools that expand access to public records um, so that the public, New Yorkers, visitors, uh, anyone alike could um, learn about the city uh, that they're visiting or, or that they live in. Um, before I dive into um, some of the projects that Michelle mentioned, I thought I'd just give a little intro to our team this is us. This is uh, what was our old office uh, off of Rivington Street. Um, this was actually right before the pandemic kind of hit um, in 2020, uh, celebrating uh, the end of the year in 2019 uh, at our old office building. Uh, and this photo right here, this then and now picture was actually taken with our mobile app. Um, yeah, so about half of us work on the product side and then the other half of us work um, on the content and partnership side. Um, you can kind of see here that this is actually an old photo of our building. This was taken in um, 1915 uh, and 1908, I believe, uh, were the years. Um, but you could see uh, uh, in these photos that there was a bank in there at one point, as well as a canisteri. Um, moving forward, actually, into like the 1980s, there was a band called Rancid that filmed a music video there. Um, the bank from like the early 1900s um, is actually still has a uh, safe in the basement. Um, Urban Archive held down a uh, port there for a couple of years. Um, and uh, in the early 2000s, um, it was also a, a speakeasy at one point, but later a bar where Lady Gaga used to hang out. Um, and just around the corner, this is actually an old building captured in 1898, if you're familiar with the Lower East Side area. Um, uh, this was a time when um, the Lower East Side was one of the densest areas in the city. Um, and this is it about, um, I think it was in 20, uh, this is a present day view, so many years later, uh, but you could see that the streetscape looks very similar, but you can kind of take into place that there are different um, elements, some old, some new. Um, why I'm kind of taking you down this memory lane and the history of these streets is just there are so many stories to tell. And what we're trying to do at Urban Archive is expose those stories by taking the digital collections from different institutions. Um, and mapping them on Urban Archive into one centralized platform. For those of you who might identify as techies, we're using open data to basically map these archives across all five boroughs. Um, in the city, there are over 850,000 lots um, or just buildings across New York. 
Up until this point, we have over 100, uh, 100 partners across New York, and we've mapped about 110,000 photos, um, giving us what you're looking at is our web app, um, which is available at urbanarchive.org, as well as our mobile app. If you're using our mobile app, um, we have a lot of different engaging features. If you have an iPhone, I'd recommend uh, downloading it. And you can do this thing called then and now recreations. Um, you could also go out and explore different uh, walking tours that different organizations and institutions have put together, such as HCC. Um, for the past few years, though, we've really been working with institutions. Um, and kind of why we're here today is just to talk a little bit about the ways that um, you, um, as part of HCC's community and organization, that you could get plugged in. Um, we started um, rolling out user accounts um, not too long ago. Like anyone who has an Instagram or Twitter or a Facebook page, um, in the same way that you'd have a profile page that says who you are and maybe post some activity, we at Urban Archive started rolling out user accounts so that anyone um, work with institutions to share local history and document the city. Um, this is an example of a student um, who's actually been working with Urban Archive um, in the classroom, but utilizing Urban Archive's platform to um, document uh, her explorations as a student and kind of talk about some of the things she's learning. Um, I'm actually gonna jump on over to the web app. Um, this is our uh, urbanarchive.org, which is our main site where it, again it kind of aggregates all of the different collections in one place um, where you see purple essentially is where there's an archival asset associated to that spot um, so you could see where there are darker images i could just go ahead and tap into what is the white hall building um, and you can see that there are tons of photos here um, from another a number of different organizations and institutions some of them look very similar um, but sometimes you get a photo and you are really able to see um, how the city has changed in its built environment over time. Um, when exploring Urban Archive's uh, map, you might notice that there are different stories created by organizations. I just tapped into what is the 9th Avenue L. Well. Um, and you can see there's a ton of photos. You could also see that there's a story here written by the New York Historical Society um, that outlines um, uh, how the 9th Avenue L existed um, between 1870 and 1940 through a series of photos. Um, really cool to see, especially since it's not here anymore. Um, but that's kind of the beauty of working with our platform um, is that all these different organizations can come together to document and share the local history of New York. Uh, we have the New York Transit Museum um, and the New York Historical Society in this, um, in the, uh, story that they've put together, um, which means that any of our partners and institutions could actually um, utilize photos from different organizations um, when creating on Urban Archive. Um, I'm gonna navigate to New York Historical's um, profile page just as HGC has one. Um, and let me grab that. Um, and kind of just show you some of the things that HGC has been up to. One sec. And it's loading. And I see a couple of questions coming in on the chat that I'll address in a second. Uh, but over here, this is HTC's profile page. If you go to urbanarchive.org, I will actually drop this in the chat um, if I'm able to um, and just share this with everybody. If you're panelists and attendees, if you want to explore on your own. Um, and you can see here that HTC has a ton of different um, pieces of content that they've put together documenting a couple of things. And I'm, I know Michelle can speak to this better than I can, but different tours. Um, you can see here that um, there's a content filler. and I'm going to um, actually go ahead on their site and filter their profile page for the different stories. And you can see that HTC has a six to celebrate program. Um, that documents uh, neighborhoods in the city and um, their preservation history and, and sites that are really prominent and iconic in different neighborhoods, as well as um, just some fun, straight up fun stories like how a store makes a name for itself 100 years in the making of the Cathedral of St. John's the Divine. So it's a really great way for you as HDCers from home or out and about in the city to maybe go out and explore a different neighborhood. 
Um, doctors are always one of my faves from HDC. They also have, um, in addition to all the stories that they've put here, um, 50 years of preserving history. And you can see just some of the um, sites that they've worked to preserve across the city um, as part of their 50th anniversary. This of course is not all, but really the purpose of these stories with our partners uh, such as HDC is to create digestible content that is informing everyday New Yorkers about the history of the city and prominent sites um, and so on. So I would recommend every, anyone just really jumping on to Urban Archives platform, uh, connecting with HEC and some other organizations. Um, and another great thing about uh, the platform is you could also search. Um, I like to search like uh, menu. Um, so you are able to pull up uh, different images that either reference a menu or located to a menu, whatever it might be, but you could keyword search Urban Archives platform. And what it will do is um, pull up sites that you can see in 103 Bowery has a menu actually located uh, to 103 Bowery. And there's a menu on the side of uh, the street on the outside of the building. Um, but there are other menus such as um, 135 Essex Street. This is a really, one of my favorite stories, Bernstein's on Essex. It was known as the kosher in Chinese deli um, that actually I think is known for um, kind of birthing a, a kosher and Chinese food in the Lower East Side when those two uh, neighborhoods and communities really overlap. Um, but you can see that uh, the word menu is popping up over here in this little descriptive text. So it's a great way for you guys to uh, look at menus in a variety of different ways, um, including Gage and Tolner, which just reopened, or even menus that once were um, served at um, the UN, um, chilled melon, braised stuffed beef. So there's a lot of different ways that uh, just that one keyword search could roll over. So if you're interested in your neighborhood or if you're interested in um, a particular history or just want to search anything for fun, that's available to anyone. Uh, Melinda, I saw that you asked the question, which is how are copyrights handled for photos? Um, good question. Um, so all of the photos on our platform are shared with Urban Archive. Some are in public domain, some are not. Um, like I said, we have over 100 partners. And for all of the institutions, particularly those that are sharing collections with us, um, sometimes it's really laid back. Sometimes organizations don't really care to sign off paperwork. But for larger institutions, of course, like the Met or the New York Historical Society, Museum of New York, where there are hundreds of uh, tens of thousands of photos that they're sharing with us. Um, we usually are working within the copyrights that either they have um, of, uh, that have been uh, set for a collection um, or come to some form of an agreement. But we at Urban Archive, we're not profiting off of it. Actually, photos you can't even download off of our site. Um, but what we do have on our site is this source button, meaning that anyone who's exploring Urban Archive could go and navigate, tap into uh, the source. And then you're able to download photos and work with the collections directly from that site um, without kind of doing that from Urban Archive, just as a, another entry point to discovery. Um, and so not all photos have this source button, I will note. And the reason for that is not all collections were public before Urban Archive or even uh, made available. Um, sometimes they, they were digitized, but they, uh, the organization doesn't have a collection portal. So it's a great way to kind of um, just explore the city like that. And um, you also asked a question about AR coding. Um, right now, we really just have um, our web app and our mobile app, which is geolocating archives. We do have a couple of interactive features on our iOS app, um, but um, you are unable to really do any cool AR stuff with it, if that um, answers your question. Um, like I said, we've been experimenting with user accounts. Um, all of our, uh, we have a, a number of different users. This is actually my profile page here at Urban Archive. And you can go ahead and sign up at urbanarchive.org slash sign up. Um, and I'll share that link in the chat in a second. But what that does is enables you to log in and get access to Urban Archive in the same way that our partner organizations like HDC. Um, so for me, um, like I work at Urban Archive, I've seen a ton of really awesome photos um, over the past few years. So what I did as a user was just went in and kind of 
mapped out some of my favorites. I particularly love the Department of Sanitation's photos. You can see here, they have pretty snarky um, campaigns such as you missed the litter basket with 1200 pounds a day um, in just Times Square. So um, if you are like me and love looking at old historical photos, that's just a fun way to maybe uh, pinpoint your faves. And if you're also like me, and maybe grew up from the city or your family's from the city, you're all, you are also able to upload photos, um, add them to Urban Archive, and join Urban Archive and our partners um, in creating stories and filling in the map. So this title says it all. Um, these are some photos of my parents who grew up in Greenpoint and Astoria um, while uh, young in the 80s and stuff. So I would encourage you guys to maybe go in, create a user account, and creating on Urban Archive as a user is quite simple. Once you create an account at the sign up link that I will share um, in the chat right now. Um, let me do that. Um, one sec. That's the link. Once you do that, um, everyone would get access to what we call this little hamburger icon um, where you could go in and create a walk or a story, um, really the same thing um, at the end of the day, but we could, for the purposes of this example, we'll go in and we'll create a walk around um, Hunters Point South in Long Island City. So I'll zoom into that section on the map. I'll click create a walk um, and we'll call it Hunters Point South. And you could call that whatever you'd like it to be. Um, and once you do that, it'll start creating a story. Um, and to build a story or a walking tour, you could go in um, and just select the photos that you see. Um, you could see here um, that uh, just tapping into the map, looking at different photos, you could pull in different sites um, and so on. I'm gonna tap into um, over here. Oh, my computer's going a little bit slow. Um, and you could add them to a story. Um, and again, right now we're looking at Queens Public Library ones. Um, and then you could write a little bit about them or maybe this is just for yourself and you wanna bookmark sites that kind of interest you. Um, sometimes, like as I noted as a user, um, there's not always photos of, of buildings across the city, particularly when you get to the outer boroughs. Um, Manhattan's pretty stocked as you saw on the map, but Brooklyn, uh, even Brooklyn, but Queens, particularly Queens, Staten Island, and the Bronx have less um, digitized images or um, given the history, particularly of like Queens, which was um, very rural um, and a lot of the photo documentation, it's hard to exactly pinpoint it. But if you have a photo you'd like to add to the map, you could just zoom into a section. You'll see all these little building outlines pop up and you could just click add a file. So it's a really easy way to kind of interact with the map. And then uh, create different pieces of content and publish it. I saw another question come in. Does Urban Archive support any uh, non-New York City locations, New Jersey, for example? Uh, that's another good question. If you go to urbanarchive.org, you will see that there um, is a train city button over here. We do have a couple of other cities. Given how we work at Urban Archive, uh, we can't just overlay set up any city. We normally try to partner with different institutions, get some organizational content in on the map. But if you are in New York and you ever make your way upstate, uh, there's Newark, New York, as well as Albany. And you could go in and tap or take Urban Archives mobile app and explore um, different, um, and explore different, uh, I should get out of that story so that it'll move us. Um, you could explore different um, towns, cities, neighborhoods in that way. Um, and I would actually say if you go up to um, Albany, picturing urban, urban Renewal is one of our partners there. They do a really, really awesome job at um, sharing the history of what is the, I believe it's the Empire State Plaza. Um, and it's a couple of blocks that were um, demolished for the making of this uh, this new building, government building, and um, just a lot of personal stories, um, a, lo a lot of really great stories that just come out of um, th this one project. So I'd recommend um, checking that out. We also have Newburgh, New York, um, as well as uh, Cali, Columbia, 
Um, and we are soon launching um, in Ogden, Utah, which is also a really interesting history um, if you uh, ever make your way up to Utah. Um, so yeah, and then maybe one final thing to share, and I've been talking um, probably at a very fast pace for the past few minutes, but um, as Michelle noted, we, in addition to working off of urbanarchive.org, um, sometimes we get approached by our partners, they have a project um, and they have this idea and we kind of come together in this collaborative space. And um, unlike the other app, uh, other site that you saw at urbanarchive.org, this is uh, stories.hdc.org. And this site, again, is just um, focused on telling uh, the story of um, HDC's own history. Um, and how they advocate for historic neighborhoods across the city. So they've uploaded their own content and the photos that they've taken over the years. Um, but in addition to that, they've also uh, created a number of different tours that tell you why um, uh, the history is important across different neighborhoods, pinpointing sites in LGBTQ history as well as Latin history. So I really would recommend you guys checking that out. I'll drop this link also in the chat. Um, and um, allow you guys to explore it like that. So in the same way that you are at urbanarchive.org, you're able to explore just HDC content with this site um, and so on. So I think that's it from me. Um, and maybe one other, actually one other note is we have urbanarchive.nyc slash tutorial. So if you actually do end up creating an account, um, you are able to, uh, you'll have access to our team for support, but you'll also be able to um, check out some of these tutorials and um, maybe work with some of the content that HDC has put up as well as uh, maybe add your own. So if anyone has any questions, I'll create some space for that at this moment. Uh, otherwise, um, we can maybe open it up and if uh, Michelle has any further um, notes to share. Um, yeah, I haven't seen any other questions. I know I shared a lot of information, so I'm in the chat going to share a couple of different links, such as the tutorials, if anyone else is interested in that. Um, and you could also feel free to reach out to Sam at urbanarchive.nyc, team at urbanarchive.nyc, if you have any questions. Um, and again, would definitely recommend checking out HTC's content and what they put together on Urban Archive. Uh, it says, do the uploads from users get curated in any way? Um, so from our perspective, yes. Um, the Especially the white label site that we created that is specifically for the um, cultural sites, we put all of that together. And so each story is individual to the cultural history. Um, I think if you're uploading it yourself, you have the option. You can either do it as individual posts and not curate it, or you can put it in a story and have all of those posts be a part of one story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everyone on... Um... So as Michelle, just to add to that, uh, Michelle has the HBC site and that's fully their, their own to curate. If you're working with Urban Archive, and it's a bit confusing, but you can think of Urban Archive as the main collaborative platform. And then also um, HTC site as their focus site for their work. Um, if you're sending stuff to Urban Archive, you can in a way just upload it, but it will go through some uh, just rounds of approval just to make sure that it's accessible for the site and so on. Are there partnerships with local historian, uh, historical societies? Uh, yes, there are. We work with Brooklyn Public Library, New York Public Library, Queens Public Library, as well as the local historical societies um, across most boroughs, um, Queens, uh, Manhattan, and uh, Brooklyn. Um, we, at this point, have really worked with most large and small organizations and Typically, if we're not working with an organization, it might be they don't have an archives person, collections, or maybe just sometimes the capacity of different organizations. Sometimes um, we'll, we'll be talking with an organization that really only has like two staff members. 
um, so that there are resources and just ability to maybe sometimes curate walking tours is a bit different than um, some of our partners with even four uh, or six, and which is quite common, I think, in the preservation world, but um, really can vary organization to organization and the work they're able to kind of take on. And we are really not trying to add to more work, but just, I think, come alongside our partners and support them in our platform. So sometimes it's a matter of the right timing and programs. Um, okay, I guess if there are no other questions, then you're done then. Great job explaining everything, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah. Um, and feel free to reach out if anyone uh, wants to chat directly. Uh, yeah, I encourage everyone to download the app if you have an iPhone, go on the web if you have um, Android, play around with it. There's so much content on there. A lot of amazing stories. It's honestly just fun. Um, and they have also kind of like built in walking tours as well. So if you actually want to take like your phone out and go explore, you can do one of their walking tours. Um, we have a good amount of our six to celebrate stuff on Urban Archive, which is our um, the walking tours. Just as a reminder, we have all of the actual brochures you can download as free PDFs on our website, sixtocelebrate.org as well, if you wanted to do that. Just a quick plug for us. <laughs> um, but yeah, again, you know, reach out to either of us if anyone has any questions, but if that's all, then thank you everyone and have a good night. Thanks so much, Sam. Yeah, likewise. Thanks, guys. Nice to see you. Bye.